Okay, cool. So the next session is uh, Building Debian Jesse for Microsoft Public Cloud by Martin Zobelhelas and Steven Zarkas. Hi, everyone. Um, as you might have followed during the last year's DebConf, um, there were questions on the Debian develop mailing list asking about support for um, Microsoft uh, Debian images for Microsoft Azure Cloud. And um, during last year's DebConf, I gave a short introduction on what we plan to do. And this is more or less a talk on what we did the last year. Um, okay. uh, so, well, that's loud. Is anyone not familiar with what Azure is? Uh, I know we're running low on time, so if there's no hands, here's a slide on that. Um, basically, Azure uh, is a fast-growing cloud, so if you haven't used it, uh, you know, it's, it's actually pretty, pretty neat. It's um, one of the big three with uh, 26 regions, and three of those regions are um, uh, local regions like uh, Azure China and Germany and uh, one for US Gov. Uh, we support all the major Linux distros, including Debian 7 and 8, and uh, we um, started supporting Debian late last year, and um, it quickly rose to one of the top Linux distributions, top three in Azure. So obviously there was a lot of latent uh, interest in Debian, uh, people waiting for it for quite a while. And we now can say that we have a third of the VMs in Azure are running Linux. Um, I like to say that a few years ago when we started, it was 0%, now we have 30, you know, a third. So you know, maybe next DevConf we'll have a bigger number for you. So it's definitely a popular project for us. We can probably move along. And uh, if there's any questions about Azure, I'm happy to take them afterward. So who is involved within the project? Uh, I, from within the project, I'm from Microsoft. From the project, this is Bastian Blank, Alexander Wirth, and uh, my uh, and uh, and me, and it's uh, from the Microsoft side. It's Steve, it's Josh Paulson who had been in Heidelberg last year, and Daniel De uh, Daniel Soul. Um, uh, lately doing the work on the Azure uh, Linux agent. Yep. So what have you done in the in the uh, last year. We effectively started first uh, doing a build host for building the images. And upon, upon request from Microsoft, we um, uh, set up an internal mirror network inside um, Microsoft Azure um, using um, a Azure part that's called a traffic manager. It's, it's some sort of load balancer. So we are having two mirrors per region um, behind, behind the load balancer. And where, from wherever you uh, connect uh, within the region, you will be directed to your closest mirror. Um, uh, so we have one URL in all the images that pointing to Debian archive tra traffic manager.net. And this, list, uh, this um, mirror also got recently added to the Debian mirrors list as, as it's also reachable from outside <laughs> Azure. And we set up um, quite a bit of monitoring infrastructure. So we see if the build pipeline is broken or if the mirrors are broken and so on. So we set up um, that infrastructure. Um, the build host currently is doing daily, uh, daily builds of uh, VZ, Jesse, and Stretch. Um, and we are doing daily uploads into public Azure. Um, why are we doing the daily builds? Because um, we want the latest security, in, uh, security packages or s s package from Security Debian Org installed uh, into the images that persons boot up. There is a possibility to boot up older images. If you are interested in that, speak with me or speak with Steve. We can explain you how you can uh, boot up older images from, from a few days before that. 
Um, then there is a release pro uh, process um, for uploads to the th uh, for those three VZ, Jesse, and Stretch. And Steve yesterday worked on also getting the K3 BSD uh, images not yet working, but we are working on getting K3 BSD images as well. Um, um, and for the build process, we are using um, Jenkins as job builder and made, make all the log files um, for the build process we are doing uh, publicly available through this Jenkins job scheduler. This was one of the requests that we had from the trademark team last year. Um, yeah. Yeah, as I said, Microsoft wants routine update traffic restricted to Azure regions. So persons doing the, uh, having an app source to, to uh, Debian traffic manager.net, um, Debian archive traffic manager.net, get those traffic uh, into their own regions. We have two mirrors in each public Azure region. Why are we doing that? Um, we are um, first taking so if a mirror push occurs, we are first taking out the first mirror, doing the full mirror run, um, then switching the mirrors in the, in the load balancers, doing the second mirror run from uh, one in internal master mirror, and then we have both mirrors uh, in the Azure region pub on, on, the new, um, on the new mirror pulls. Um, we are currently getting pushed from the Debian um, sync proxies. So we are usually quite up to date. Um, we are doing that for the main archive and for the security archive. Um, currently, we only have AMD 64, uh, um, the 32-bit and the source. Why are we doing the 32-bit? Because sometimes persons want to run um, multi-arc uh, with 30-bit uh, closed source software on their um, images. So we thought that is a good idea to also add the I386. Uh, and as said, 26 regions plus the master mirror is about roughly 25 terabyte. Um, and we are, as I said, we are running those mirrors with, uh, with a yeah, slightly adapted version um, so how we are uh, pushing the mirrors. Um, there was a lot of internal discussion um, when we started about uh, which process to use for um, building the images. Um, there was either the possibility to use OpenStack Debian images versus the Bootstrap VZ. Um, we ended up because we wanted some fast, uh, we wanted uh, we wanted images quite fast, uh, av being available to the uh, to the community. So um, uh, we took OpenStack Debian images because we, I was personally already doing um, uh, running uh, building images of, uh, uh, using that tool for the um, OpenStack setup. I um, tried to do in the past years as DSA member. So I was used to that uh, script. And um, yeah, then um, Bastian did a lot of work on the packaging on the Azure Linux agent um, and uploaded new versions of that into the archive. Uh, we are currently still with 2.0.3, is that correct? Three? Mm, you know, well, yeah. yeah. So we just upgraded 2.1.3, and the other ones are running 2.0.6. Six, sorry, 16. So we have a couple branches. Yeah. Um, we also currently work on um, getting the main um, uh, provisioning done by uh, Cloud Init. So we will hopefully in future switch from currently, uh, currently we are uh, provisioning the images using the Azure Linux agent and for in hopefully foreseeable future Cloud init will take over that part, and we only uh, do the scripting part um, 
using the Azure Linux agent. Yes, and the software, we, as I said, already said, we are using Jenkins for building the images. Um, there were some problems with um, defining more or less static IPs uh, in the ISC DHCP client package, um, which uh, where patches were available even in DBTS. And we were able to convince the um, release team to get this patch accepted for uh, Debian 8.2. Um, Thomas was recently so kind to merge most of our patches we did for OpenStack Debian images back into, uh, into his script. And um, uh, we probably will, uh, I, we already discussed that, I think two days ago, that we probably will extend that script a bit so we uh, can actually define whether we want to um, bootstrap uh, OpenStack image or if we want to bootstrap uh, Azure image. And uh, also as a, an additional result, um, Bastia, uh, when we started the um, mirror network was the persons behind the, uh, doing all the mirroring work were mostly um, missing in action. And as one result, Bastian is nowadays doing, um, uh, working on the Debian mirror network um, during his paid work time. So he invests one to two hours a week into adding new mirrors, having the mirror list up to date and so on. Beside uh, Donald Norwood, I think, who is also the other person on the, behind the Debian mirrors list. Yeah, um, we had quite a lot of discussion after we uh, were more or less ready um, to publish the, the images with the Debian trademark team because Microsoft asked us if we could please speak to the Debian trademark team that we are officially may use the Debian trademark for the images. And that was a sort of longish discussion, um, which resulted in um, me publishing, uh, me and Bastian publishing um, what we have done so far on the Debian cloud mailing list. And um, then uh, one of the outcomes of that discussion is that we want the images being built on the Debian CD, Debian images, however it will be called in future um, uh, team. And I spoke with uh, Steve, um, Steve McIntyre recently and we will move to uh, the Debian CD image master machine to build our images. So, um, yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, bullet number two, along with CloudNet support, uh, which is mostly there, it's just a matter of integrating with Debian. Uh, we have, we've pretty much completely rewritten the Azure Linux agent, which does a whole bunch of other plumbing. We can go into that whole nother talk, I think. But um, that is uh, another component that uh, Microsoft supports. It's up on GitHub. And then the, uh, the last uh, item is uh, this new thing called Azure Stack, which is currently in technical preview. And uh, you can think of Azure Stack as your own personal Azure region. Um, it's an on-prem version of Azure running on top of Microsoft Windows. They're using Server 2016 for that. Um, and it'll be released later <laughs> when it's ready. Um, but uh, it is, uh, in, in other words, you know, we have 26 Azure regions, and you can create your own Azure region in your own office or your basement or whatever you want using the same <laughs> protocols and APIs that you would provision a VM onto Azure with. Uh, you can provision onto Azure Stack on-prem. So look for that later this year. Yeah. And uh, stretch images are newly built now with um, cloud in it doing the provisioning and um, just Linux Azure agent doing the scripting behind that. I should also mention on the Azure Stack side, um, you, you can use the same image as well. So it's, it's, it's compatible internally and externally. Uh, in terms of protocols, as long as you're using uh, the right version of the agent, we have uh, you can basically move your VMs back and forth. Yeah, contact all of us, uh, uh, the guys working at Creditive um, and the uh, persons uh, at Microsoft behind the whole Debian Azure images are reading the Debian cloud list and following that. So if any questions occur, just speak up on the Debian cloud list and 
we are happy to help you with the technical answers if those images are uh, if those questions are more in um, well I have problems with in Azure you should probably just use the Azure support portal and yeah. speak there uh, yeah. yeah that's mostly thank you is there any questions Whoa. good talk there is one well, Hello, it's it's really good to see this work. I uh, I used to be in doing similar stuff at Google, and it's great to see that it's uh, sort of spreading to uh, Azure as well. And um, I'm wondering, did you when you were comparing OpenStack Debian images and Bootstrap VZ, which uh, both uh, Azure and Google currently use? I th uh, sorry, no, Amazon and Google currently use. Um, I, I totally understand why you went with the one you were more familiar with. It's definitely a good way to get it done faster. Um, that makes complete sense. Did you find any other differences that are worth noting between the two? Like in terms of one being better for certain purposes or the other being better for certain purposes? We, we were internally discussing that and I think Steve is even still taking care of the um, Bootstrap VZ uh, patches for, my, uh, for Microsoft Azure, uh, Debian, uh, uh, sorry, Debian images for Azure. So um, we could probably also switch to, to that script. It, it needs a little bit of work. Um, yep. But I was actually written for Bootstrap VZ, but I was overruled. <laughs> yeah, because I'm, I'm the author of the script, so I, so I wrote it in only shell script to make it easy for everyone to understand. So, it's, uh, the, so the, the, the thing I do, did is like 600 lines it goes from the top of the source to the bottom. So I think that's the main reason why they used it, because it's probably easier to hack. And then in terms of, of features, I, I don't know the other one well enough. Any other questions? Right. Any other questions? OK, then let's thank the speakers. Yeah. Thank you. I would I would like to also encourage everyone here to also participate in the Debian Cloud Buff, which is taking place at Menzies 12 around uh, six, uh, 4 p.m. to uh, this afternoon. Okay, so then we're off for lunch. See you later, everybody.